Hey guys, it's Hunter. Welcome back to another behind the scenes unboxing video. These are some of my favorite videos to do, give you a sneak peek of what's coming up on the channel. I'm not exaggerating when I say today I've got a really, really exciting one for you. We're getting closer and closer to a massive milestone for the channel. I'm not going to bother with a big intro because I'd rather show than tell. So do me a favor, slap a like on the video if you're going to enjoy it. That actually really helps out with the wild and wacky YouTube algorithm. And let's take a closer look on what we have to unbox today. First box of the new year. British Santa decided to swing by and we've got a Christmas present from England. You know, for as far as it's come, it's kind of beat up, but actually not in too bad shape. So let's go ahead and open it up, see what we got. Okay, that's pretty sick. Right, Pringle. So this is a Victory Super Kraken 100 watt tube head. I'm sorry, valve head. And I've been stoked to try one of these. And I reserved one of these months ago. They've just been out of stock because there's such high demand for them. Victory, they're a boutique builder out of the UK. And this particular one, the Super Kraken, Rabia had a hand in voicing it. And that dude gets some absolutely killer tones. I mean, he knows his high gain. I've only tried the Kraken mini pedal loaded with the uh, two notes. And that convinced me, it was like, man, I need to try the big PP tube amp version. It was so tight, so dry, kind of like a darker rocker verb. Super British sounding amp, not like anything I've got in my collection. So we've got a ton of tone shaping options. Interestingly, just one shared EQ, but then dual master, dual gain. And this is interesting, instead of one foot switch with four buttons, you got two foot switches. I see where they're going with this. Like if you don't use the focus and crunch and you just want the functionality of game one, game two, master one, master two, you can just use this one or vice versa. If you're just gonna be on one channel and you want the tone shaping options, you can go with this. So it's a more modular approach. I don't know if I prefer that over a one foot switch solution. Interestingly too, there's only one switch on the front. So right now it's in the standby position. Then you can go into full power or low power mode. And then the main power switch is on the back. Really interesting solution. I've never seen that before. I guess it's a way to keep the front panel more clean. The back here, you've got serial number, the bias adjust, your speaker outputs, your push push focus switch, MIDI functionality, foot switch inputs, and your effects loop. There you go, made in England by Victory Amplification. Also, I noticed this with Silver Jubilee and the Orange Rocker Verb, but especially with the Rocker Verb because it's also got a relatively small head shell. I don't know what they feed these things, but British amps are fucking heavy. Ballparking it, I'm pretty sure this is heavier than the big ass triamp. <laughs> it's ridiculous. But yeah, I've been getting more into amps this year. I've got a couple of amp demos on the way. Just dropped Blackstar and PV videos that were a lot of fun to make. And Victory, man, I've been dying to work with them more. They're one of Mark Tremonti's favorite flavors right now, and that dude can play anything he wants. But every time he posts a picture of his studio, I mean, he's using a Victory amp of some sort. Actually, the only time I met him um, was at the Victory booth at NAMM. If you didn't know about Victory before, keep them on your radar. Right after this video, I know what I'm gonna be playing with. And uh, it turns out that 3,233% of viewers are not subscribed. So here's your quick reminder to go ahead and do that so you don't miss the demo. I really appreciate it and it also really helps the channel out. Next boxes. Right, Pringle? Good girl. Huh, these don't look like guitars. That's because, wait a second, it's not a guitar, it's today's sponsor, Magic Spoon. I love cereal, you probably love cereal, everybody loves cereal. And Magic Spoon is the best kind of cereal. It tastes like your favorite childhood cereal while also being high in protein, low carb, zero grams of sugar, no corn syrup, no artificial flavors or sweeteners. It's gluten-free, grain-free, soy-free, keto-friendly, all the other things that health nuts talk about. I'll be totally honest with you, all that is great, but that's really not what I look for when I buy food. It's absolutely no fun when your food tastes like cardboard. Controversial take, 
I want my food to taste good. Magic Spoon bills themselves as being a cereal that tastes too good to be true. They've got a ton of flavors so you can build your own custom variety boxes like this one. Maple waffle, cookies and cream, blueberry muffin, cinnamon roll, and birthday cake. And there are even cereal bars you can add as well. These are not bland cereals. They definitely do not taste like cardboard. All while having four net grams of carbs and a full 12 to 14 grams of complete protein per serving. Also, it has nothing to do with the food aspect, but I love the art style. Something about it is an instant happiness generator. So if you're ready to try high protein cereal with zero sugar that tastes too good to be true, head on over to magicspoon.com slash agafish. And for you guys, use the code agafish for $5 off your order. There's also 100% money back happiness guarantee, no questions asked, so trying it out is kind of a no-brainer. You can scan the QR code on the screen, link will also be in the description, and of course clicking it helps support the channel by letting them know that I sent you. And while you're doing that, let's see what else we've got to unbox. First guitar box of the new year. If you recognize this logo, that's a pretty big clue as to what's inside. And I kind of know what's inside, I'm not exactly sure which versions they sent over though. It's like DHL tried its best to really put the packaging to the test. Yeah, I've seen worse though. Hopefully nothing's damaged. I've been dying to see these. I know you guys have been dying to see what's inside too. So let's go ahead, open it up. Holy fucking shit. Dear God, that is cool. This is one of the final prototypes for my upcoming signature Harley Benton in purple sandblasted ash. Oh, and for anyone wondering, that is proper sandblasting too. It's got the 3D grain effect. It's not a flat figured veneer. This is an actual sandblasted ash cap. Even the headstock has a thin ash cap and this is going to be natural roasted maple on the final version. You know, pretty much like this. I thought they were sending the satin black one as well. Maybe that's coming in a different box. Oh, cool. This time they've included the proper knobs as well. They've got a little bit of textured tape, which makes it easier to use the push pull. I love speed knobs. They just get a little slippery sometimes. This solves that. So obviously the color, the sandblasting, that's cool. You guys notice anything different about this one though? Yeah, let me grab the other one to compare real quick. So this is the last prototype. It's a 25 scale inch guitar. Looks very, very nice. And this is the new one. It's a 28 inch baritone. Let's fucking go. I mean, these look just insane. And what I've always loved about the sandblasted ash tops, the figuring is so well defined, but it's also unique. Like these two guitars, obviously, I mean, you can tell they're from the same series. It's like a fingerprint. Each one is different. So when they go into production and you pick yours up, it'll be different to anyone else's. That's your guitar. <laughs> That's really cool. Other than the extra three inches, specs are the same. Makisar Ebony fingerboard, jumbo stainless steel frets, glow in the dark inlays, locking tuners. We thought we'd experiment with like a different color on the back. I'm not sure if I like it or not. I think I prefer what we were doing before, but what do you guys think? Got the really comfortable set through neck joint. This to the ebony truss rod cover. This is one of my favorite little small luxury features. This little logo, because my last name is Angel in German. Custom Roswell Seraphim set specifically voiced for these guitars, which is insane. I can't believe they let me do that. Korean satin chrome hardware. I mean, this thing is crazy. And they've sent me this, not just for the guitar porn aspect. Like I still can't get over how fucking good this looks, but also to test it out. So let's go ahead, plug it in. Okay, so this is literally the first time that I'm playing one of these baritone prototypes. So we are literally witnessing the very first chugs. I mean, I love that about YouTube, man. But anyways, so this is what it sounds like. <laughs> it's fucking nonsense, man. So right now I've got this in drop A and I actually had them put on quite light gauge strings on this because that's what I prefer. But with this scale length, if you put heavier gauge strings, you can easily go lower than this. <laughs> The bridge pickup actually needs to be lowered. Bear with me. Oh my god, this is incredible. Let's try some cleans now. Pretty nice. 
both pickups. I'm so glad we added a coil split. I don't really know what I'm doing with cleans though. <laughs> yeah, I mean, this thing is fucking sweet. It turned out so well. Let me know what you guys think. If you're excited about it, drop a comment down below. That actually really helps out with determining like how many of these we should make because this thing is a monster and Toman doesn't really know how many they should make. I could literally chug on this thing all day, but we do have the rest of the video to film. Let's see what else we've got to unbox. Next box or envelope rather. We've had a lot of big boxes. Let's calm it down a little bit. Open this little thing up. Okay, so the pick gnomes have absolutely raided my place. No joke, this is the only pick I have left. And like, Koshi's been using it as a play toy. I love the Jazz 3, so I ordered a 24 pack of those. My sweet water guy, George, and I actually know him from like middle school back in Shanghai. Kind of crazy how small the world could be. But he saw that I had ordered this big bag of Dunlop picks. And I asked him what's the difference between the regular ones and the max grip ones, because the regular ones, it was like 15 bucks. The max grip, they look the same, but they're nine bucks. And he's like, well, why don't you just try it out for yourself? <laughs> and then this shows up. I much prefer the small ones, so I'm pretty sure I'm gonna like these ones the best. But like what the difference is between the carbon fiber and the uh, stiffo, <laughs> lol. What the difference is between those, I'm not really sure. I've really just played the Jazz 3s for the last like 10 years. So massive shout out to my boy George and to uh, his new coworker JD. Customer service at Sweetwater is fucking nuts, man. They take care of you. And they even provide a little unboxing snack, so that's cool. But yeah, what picks are you guys using now? And has anyone tried the Max Grips? Now, obviously the grip pattern is different, but uh, do you prefer it compared to the regular Jazz 3s? Or nah, the OG is king. Hi, Kosh. Snack stealer. Yeah, all these picks are probably gonna last like a month. <laughs> Pick gnomes are the fucking worst, man. But yeah, thanks again, George, JD, Sweetwater. Really appreciate it. Next box. All right, so this um, obviously is not a guitar, but it is something as a content creator and a massive, massive nerd that I am really excited about. So I figured we can open it together, can share it with you guys. It's a desperately needed upgrade that should really, really help with the channel. So let's go ahead open it up. Dude, okay, you guys have no idea. I'm so excited for this. This is the new 16 inch M2 MacBook Pro and I've been waiting so long for this to drop. Now, a few months back, I got this. It's the Mac Studio M1 Pro. If you're doing content creation, this thing is a fucking beast. One downside, I mean, you're gonna deal with a fuck load of dongles, but any sort of creative work, this thing is mind-blowingly fast. Apple's basically built the processors from the ground up for video editing. I'm not gonna bore you with like the nerdy spec details that I know by heart. All I'm gonna say is that what used to take me like an hour to render takes this thing about three minutes. It's fucking nuts. It's so, so quick for what I needed to do. Can't recommend it enough. I've been waiting for their new laptops to drop. They finally did and it wasn't cheap, but this is supposed to be even faster. And my old laptop, it served me well but I got it in 2015. It's just useless for work. I can't edit on it. Even emails are slow. And since my goal is to travel more this year because what the fuck was the last three years, right? Wasn't able to go anywhere. But with this, gonna be able to bring you guys great content from anywhere in the world. And that's gonna do it for this behind the scenes unboxing video. I am so hyped for this year, man. I can't wait to finally get these things out to you guys. Again, if you're excited for it too, let me know down in the comments. That gives us a better idea of how many to make, especially when it comes to the long boys and the lefty models, because those are a more specific audience. But like most of the time lefties get ignored so hard and that really sucks. So I'm pushing 
for everyone to be included with the launch fund. Makes my case to Toman much easier if there's actually evidence to back it up. Also, massive shout out to my amazing patrons. Their names are on the screen right now. Consider joining them or as a YouTube member if you're enjoying the content and want to support what I do. Links to that, social media, merch, and Discord are in the description. As always, thank you so much for watching. You've been awesome and I will see you for the next video.